Hello, and welcome back to part two of painting some mountainy terrain rock stuff. Um, so the black base coat has dried. And as you may see from cutting around to different cameras, uh, kind of like I predicted, the coverage wasn't perfect. Um, you could see little bits of pink coming through. You could see like where my thumb was there and some of the brush strokes. And um, as I mentioned, that's fine because what I'm gonna end up doing is layering multiple levels of gray over this paint. So, you know, if there is some uh, little bits that peek through, that's totally a-okay. So for this next step, we're gonna be using that middle um, gray, this pewter gray. Uh, and it's, it's kind of a standby for me. Anytime I do like dungeon terrain, rocky terrain, this is something that you need to have like in your arsenal. So, um, and I've, I've done so many different crafts using this pewter gray, and then typically doing the highlights with the granite gray, um, the, the brighter kind of granite gray stuff. So let's get started. So I have a little paper plate here. Um, a cup with my my brush um, and you know I don't always have a wet brush I don't always add water to water things down but when I'm working on this scale <clears throat> I like to do some experimentation so I'll shake up my paint here and uh, put a blob down on the plate amidst some water now a friend of mine who is actually a painter and a very good miniature painter as well Justin Miller um, advised that you, when you have acrylic paint, to make sure that you have a damp um, cloth or a damp uh, paper towel on a plate. And what that does is it keeps the paint from drying up during a painting session. Um, I kind of have too much water, so this is sort of spreading out the paint, but that's fine. What I'm gonna do is just load up this brush and I'm gonna start trying out some different techniques, okay? So the first thing I'll do just across here is I'll just paint straight strips, okay? And I'm just kind of crisscrossing. And that's gonna give me a nice total coverage, okay? Over my black. Now, what this does is it creates brush strokes. And some people are like, well, that's horrible. You don't wanna see brush strokes on your terrain. But remember that I'm gonna go back over this with other layers too. So. I could just kind of do this all day long and paint my gray, and you'll see little bits of black poking through. That's one option. Another option is kind of a stippling, where I'm kind of stabbing the brush onto the terrain. Now what this does is it, it as I'm kind of rotating the brush around, is it creates these little sporadic splotches on the terrain, so there's a lot of black poking through. Um, and a, another type of stippling, I'm gonna load up a little more paint here, Another type of stippling is kind of more of a slapping technique. It's almost like a drummer playing a, a drum. And there I'm kind of like almost, almost spanking the brush on the terrain. And I'm kind of moving my hand around while I do it. So that creates a little texture. And I kind of like that. That might be the one. Um, the last option is a sponge. And I'll get to that after I do this piece. I'll, I'll try out the sponge on one of these. but. Um, now, I at this point have three different styles of paint happening on the top of this rock. So um, it's kind of too late for me to go back and stipple over what I already brushed. So what I'm gonna do is kind of use the brush to wipe away and spread the paint out a little more. And I'm going from different directions. So by doing that, I'm kind of spreading the paint out away from that thicker side. Now see what's happening here, is as I'm spreading the paint out away from this thicker side, it's creating negative space. In other words, it's taking the paint off. I'm erasing the paint in a way and spreading it out further over the rock. But remember that I don't really want it to look like uniform brush strokes. Okay, this isn't like a piece of fine art. So what I'm trying to do is spread the paint out that I used in different directions. So it doesn't look necessarily uniform. So I don't know if we could see that from a top shot or a side shot, 
but here you see there's a little more black peeking through. And I think that's kind of what I want to go with for the top of this piece. So I'm going to flip it around so it's easier to reach since it's a big old beast of a piece. Load up a little more paint on here. I'm going to do a little bit of a stippling technique. And I'm just going to spread it around in different, different random directions. Okay, good enough, good enough. All right, let's talk about the sides. So part of the reason why I did this deep black along the sides is because I wanted there to be shadows in the crevices and the nooks and crannies. So what I'm gonna do is load up my brush with some paint, lob off just a little bit, and do, this isn't really a dry brush. If I was doing a true dry brush, I would get almost all the paint off the brush and then lightly go against the grain to pull out the highlights. What I'm doing instead is, is kind of just a little bit of a gentle back and forth. And purposefully leaving a lot of the shadows in there. So if we go to this camera, nope, there we go. You could kind of see how there's a lot of black peeking through, and that's what I want. Okay, um, I want there to be gray here, but I want a lot of the black to peek through. So I'm just going kind of against the grain, and I have a fair amount of paint on my brush, and that's fine. Okay, so in that technique now, I have my black and I have my medium gray. And when this dries, it's actually gonna dry a little bit lighter. So that is gonna work out really well. I'm liking it already. So I'm gonna flip that around, go to this side, same thing. Kinda teasing the paint along that side. And again, this isn't a super dry dry brush. I'm okay with it being gray because I'm gonna go back over with a much lighter gray, but I'm just kind of axing across and then going against the grain a little bit there. I want it to be kind of as natural and random looking as possible. And by the way, this is also covering up those pink spots that we're peeking through. So if we were worried about that, problem solved. A little more gray. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, that's done. All right, so I like that, and it's gonna work just fine. What I wanna do now is try just the stippling effect on this piece on the top. So I'm gonna go around the edges first. And then I'm gonna kinda go around the, working my way to the center. Switch sides of the brush, and boom, there we go. Now that has a very different texture, very different texture. So with this, I feel like that is um, a really nice technique, and I want to be consistent with that for this particular rock. So I'm going to load up a little more, and I'm going to kind of do the stippling technique on the sides a little bit, all the way around, just kind of stabbing in. Doesn't matter if I get it into the black or not. Go back to this side. Oops, I dropped it, no big deal. There. That's not perfect, but that's fine, because the terrain doesn't have to be perfect. All right, now it's time to reach into the box of goodies and get a sponge. <clears throat> Couple different sponge techniques. So, you know, this is like a big old cleaning sponge, and it's got some cool texture. And maybe for some of these other bigger pieces, I might use this, but this is a small piece. This is an actual, like, real sponge. So it's very much more organic. It's not like an industrial-made sponge. The third kind of sponge that I don't have on hand would be like the kind that you use at your kitchen sink to clean things with. And again, that's a little more like industrial, typically, and man-made. So a lot of times what I do is I'll, I'll cut the sponge, like with the exacto blade, or I'll take like a pair of needle nose pliers and just pull out chunks from the sponge to give it more depth, more depth. 
Um, so I'm gonna try to use this natural sponge. I like the, the textures, the variations that it gives. Um, but if I use this dry with the paint, it's just gonna smudge it on. So what I need to do is stick this in my, my um, cup of water that I have to rinse my brush out and get it wet. Just not soaking wet, but just wet enough to be malleable, to be flexible. Soak up a little more water in there and then just squeeze it out, All right? Again, you don't want it soaking wet, you just need it to be able to be maneuverable. So I'm gonna squeeze all the water out of there. Now, now it's nice and spongy, which is what it should be because it's a sponge. All right, so I'm gonna take this butt end of the sponge and I'm gonna dip it into some paint, load it up with some paint, I'm sponging it in, but then I'm also gonna sponge some of it off because I don't want it to be too full of paint. So this is almost like what you would do with dry brushing, except it's not so much about being dry as it is about not being totally loaded with paint. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna gently sponge. And I'm gonna alternate the sponge. I'm kind of rotating my wrist X, Y, X, Y, you know, a little bit of spongy here and there, okay? And that's a really marvelous texture. You go around the edges a little more, get that. You don't wanna overdo it the point of the sponge is to, to pick up that texture. But if you see there, that's a very definitively more kind of um, randomized texture than these other two pieces. I'm just gonna do a little experiment and go back over this one with the sponge. Because layering paint is how sometimes you can make something that is that didn't work out, work out. So we'll see what that does. Kind of putting a little bit more pressure on this and I'm still rotating as I do that, but I like that texture the most. Same thing with this. I'm just gonna pop, 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 put a little more over there, boom. Okay. Since I'm with the sponge on this third piece, I'm gonna do that around the entire perimeter. So I'm gonna hit that, boom, sponge, 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 sponge. It's a really cool texture. I might have to say that this is the one. This is the winner for all three. Now, does that mean that everything I paint that's rock is always gonna use a sponge? No. Um, I tried sponges with dungeon tiles. They don't work as well. Brushes still work better, in my humble opinion. Um, now, the thing with the sponge, though, is don't overdo it, because then you're losing the whole effect. But that one, to me, is like clearly the winner. That looks the best. Don't overdo it. Resist the urge to overdo it. Okay. so. The medium gray layer on these three pieces is done. And I'm, I'm pretty happy. Um, you know what I might do though? I might, on this big guy, I might just go around and hit it with the sponge just for some added texture. Just boom, 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 there, you can't go wrong. And again, if you do go wrong, it's just, it's just styrofoam, so paint over it and do something else. Uh, the added bonus of this going over for a second layer while the paint's still wet is that it pulls off some of the previous paint. So I'm creating more texture with this overcoat that I'm doing. Hit this guy on the sides too, just for a little spongy texture. Sponge, 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 spongy, sponge. All right, done. So we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna come back later and I'm gonna get out my favorite brush. It's my oldest, crappiest brush, but it's my favorite brush for doing highlights. And then when we do that, we'll add in this nice granite gray. And maybe we'll try the sponge for highlights. Who knows what adventures will come. So we'll be back after this stuff dries.